few courses teach the art of problem formulations, but this course is different. We will show how a good problem formulation may lead to a surprisingly elegant and practical algorithm, while a bad problem formulation of the same real-life problem would lead you nowhere. It is unclear what is the best way to teach the art of problem formulations. I learned it from countless attempts to solve real-life problems, and most of these attempts led me nowhere. I will thus show you some failures on the path to a perfect problem formulation in the hope that you will learn from your mistakes. You will only fail to learn if you do not learn from failing. The first real-life problem we will discuss came from a secret Air Force report prepared during the Cold War. General Ross was interested in interdiction, bombing the Soviet railway network to disrupt transportation of men and supplies. But the Soviet railway network was so vast that it was only feasible to bomb a few segments. General Ross needed an advice on which specific segments to bomb. He had neither problem formulation nor an algorithm for the interdiction problem yet. He thus combined forces with the mathematician Ted Harris, who realized that instead of searching for interdiction, minimizing the number of segments to bomb, it makes sense to solve a completely different problem. Find a maximum steady state flow in the rail network from a station A to a station B. But what is a steady state flow in mathematical terms? The truth is that this secret report, co-written by a general and a mathematician, still did not have a rigorous problem formulation. They thus shared their report with these young mathematicians, Randall Ford and Ray Falkerson, who just finished their graduate studies in mathematics. And Ford with Falkerson came up with this brilliant problem formulation that launched the entire field of flows in network. Also, flows in networks were originally motivated by the interdiction problem. They now have applications in genomics, in computer vision, in network intrusion, de intrusion detections, and a myriad of other areas. But what is a network? Ford and Falkerson define a network as a directed graph with a special source vertex, a special sync vertex, and each edge assign a capacity. What is a flow? Flow is defined as a function on edges of the network such that flow is less than capacity for each edge and inflow into each vertex equals to outflow from this vertex for all vertices except for source and sync. The only thing left is to define what is inflow and outflow Inflow is simply the total flow over all incoming edges into a vertex V, and outflow is the total flow over all outgoing uh, edges from vertex V. In this slide, capacities are shown in black and flows are shown in blue. So, and the goal that Ford and Falkerson uh, set up is to maximize outflow from the source vertex. In this case, the outflow from the source vertex is 10 plus 6 plus 10 equal to 26. Please note that General Ross was interested in interdiction. Why Ford and Falkerson decided to maximize the flow instead of minimizing the number of uh, railway segments to bomb? because it turns out that interdiction problem and maximum flow problem are intimately connected. F solving maximum flow is equivalent to finding the minimum cut, which is shown by dashed edges at this slide, and the uh, Fort Falkerson theorem states that maximum flow equals to minimum cut. Open any textbook on algorithms and you will find an abstract maximum flow problem, typically appearing from nowhere. As a result, 
students have no clue about the hard work Ford and Falkerson had to do to transform the WAG Army report into the precise maximum flow problem. We want to change it and teach you how to transform real life challenges into algorithmic problems. For example, if I ask you to solve the image segmentation problem informally, we all understand what problem we want to solve. But can you turn this real life problem into a precise problem formulation? What is the input and the output? And do you see any similarity between this problem and the network flow problem? Likewise, it is absolutely unclear how to transform the real-life speech recognition problem into an algorithmic problem formulation. Half a century ago, Andrew Viterbi came up with a brilliant problem formulation based on hidden Markov models that is now uh, that uh, are now at the heart of speech recognition and many other machine learning applications. But what is the hidden Markov model. In this course, we will cover the hidden Markov models and many other algorithmic ideas arising from real life problems. Our examples will be mainly taken from genomics and will be based on the textbook Bioinformatics Algorithms, an active learning approach that is now in its third edition. Also, this textbook covers many algorithms you will find in a traditional algorithmic textbook. It has a different philosophy. We start every chapter from a real life problem and try to teach you how to transform it into a rigorous problem formulation. For example, you will see how a completely different problem, design of HIV vaccines, lead to the same hidden Markov model framework as the speech recognition problem. We will thus implement the Viterbi algorithm and will apply it for analyzing genome. This will illustrate that vastly different real-life problems may lead to identical problem formulations.